here we have the famous double helix shape that you're probably familiar with that when you discussed DNA. And the helix essentially forms whenever you have one strand and its complementary strand that are base pairing with each other. And notice here that I've kind of drawn a few black lines to represent these base pairs. And the bases face inward. This is known as the Watson-Crick model. It was also pioneered by Rosalind Franklin. And essentially the bases face inward. And as a result of this and the general geometry or stereochemistry of those phosphate sugar linkages, you tend to see the DNA assemble into a helix whenever those two strands, the main strand and its complementary strand, are binding with each other. When you have a helix that forms like this, one thing to be aware of is that the helix completes a full spiral, so it goes from this point and spirals all the way around to get back here, every 10 bases. So every 10 base pairs, you're going to see a return to the original position of that helix. Also remember that you measure the length of a strand in how many base pairs it is. That's another important thing to be thinking about. And when you encounter a helix, you may encounter a concept known as a major groove and a minor groove. And essentially this helix, notice that it's not completely uniform, but there is a region here where the red and blue things are very close to each other, and this is known as the minor groove. And then there's a larger distance between the blue and red here, and this is what's known as the major groove. So it actually assembles into two different grooves. You have the minor groove where the two strands are very close to each other, and the major groove where there's a larger distance. So it alternates major groove, minor groove, major groove, minor groove, and so on. Remember the helix shape that you almost always encounter with double-stranded DNA, and remember that the spiral ends up completing itself and returning to that position at every 10 base pairs. So every 10 base pairs, it completes a full spiral and returns back to its original position. And those are the major things to be aware of relating to the formation of the DNA double helix.